Welcome to Adulting on the Spectrum. In this podcast, we want to highlight the real voices of autistic adults, not just inspirational stories, but people like us talking about their day-to-day life. Basically, we want to give a voice to a variety of autistic people. I'm Aileen Lem, an autistic author and photographer, and I co-host this podcast with Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hey, Aileen. Hey, everyone. Today, our guest is GW. GW is a 21-year-old autistic advocate who is originally from Chandler, Arizona, and currently lives in Eugene, Oregon. His mission is to spread acceptance and awareness of people with disabilities, including those who have ASD and ADHD. Thanks for joining us. Yes, of course. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, just a quick correct- correction, um, I'm 22 years old, and I'll what be did 23 I say? in July. 21. Oh, well, I was looking yeah. at 22. It, it, we did have it so typed funny. right, so I don't know where the 21 came. I apologize uh, for that. No um, worries. Yeah, reminds me of the time when I accidentally got my, well, she, she was going to be my future mother-in-law's birthday wrong, but I made her a year younger, lucky to be alive, right? <laughs> Otherwise, that would have been bad. So defaulting right. to younger if you're going to get it wrong. Right, Eileen? Right, yeah. Um. Anyway... So we like to start the podcast with asking our guests how they like to be, you know, identified or sorry, identified. Whoa, I think I just made up a word Uh, identified and not just uh, pronouns, although you can share those too. But for we're asking, you know, person with autism on the spectrum, autistic, uh, do you have a preference? Um, I don't have a specific preference. You can uh, call me anything you want, Um, like person with autism, autistic individual, um, autistic, doesn't matter. If you didn't add anything after the anything you want, I would have just referred to you as anything you want. So for the rest of the podcast, you can call me anything you want. Anyway, (laughs) moving on. Uh (laughs) So when were you diagnosed? Uh, Do you want to take us back in time and tell us a little bit about your autism diagnosis? Yes, I was diagnosed when I was five years old. Um, My kindergarten teacher um, saw some traits that were very common um, among kids with ASD. Um, Most of it included stimming, which included hand flapping, walking back around and walking back and forth around in circles, Um, sometimes um, sometimes making crazy noises um, with my mouth or beatboxing. And my kindergarten teacher um, knew just from her experience and years of teaching that these were potential signs of the autism spectrum or a developmental disability. So um, during the parent teacher conference uh, back in kindergarten, she recommended and strongly suggested to my parents that I get tested. Um, Long story short, I went to a doctor and autism researcher, um, clinical researcher, and he tested me under the five categories for autism and they all came back positive. And that's when I got diagnosed. So, Uh, My next question was going to be how your autism diagnosis helped you. And it sounds like you already answered that with uh, some occupational therapy and and music therapy. Uh, They're not therapies that we hear about as often on the podcast. Can you tell us more? What is occupational therapy and how did that help you? And then the same question for music therapy. Occupational therapy um, was really fun. I mean, honestly, if I could step into that therapy office, I would do it all over again if I would um, or if I could. It was so much fun. Um, Occupational therapy was basically um, interacting and socializing with other um, kids my age who had autism and were working on better socializing and interacting with their peers in class. And those were some issues that I had early on um, when I was in grade school. Um, some of the things we did in occupational therapy to socialize were word searches, finding hidden images inside a big picture, um, or making um, making certain Christmas cards if there was a holiday season, and um, even bu- do- using building blocks and stacking those on top. I know since you know since my time as a child, as a little kid around that time, things have changed. I know they do things with tablets and electronics, but you know, considering this was back from 2008 to 2011, those were the kind of activities, those physical activities with paper, with crayons, with coloring books that we did. And as far as music therapy, um, I didn't actually have to be an expert at playing any, you know, type of music or playing an instrument. Um, I usually got to 
usually sit with my music therapy teacher and we would sometimes play the guitar and he would show me the notes or sometimes other music therapy teachers would teach me a little bit about the piano. I would play the piano with them and we would just kind of um, solo and improvise with the piano and they would work in um, social behavioral lessons into those um, sessions and it was really fun. Like I said, if I could go back and do it, I would. Um, of course, I'm all grown up now. I'm a young adult, but again, if I could, I would. Um, it was a, it, those therapy sessions were a lot of fun. Yeah, so that's great to hear because you hear a lot on, on social media how therapy is trying to make the autistic person not normal and, you know, that yes. it's uh, very, like, abusive and all of that. But it seems like for you, it was fun. You actually enjoyed the therapy. Right. It was so much fun. And here's the thing, um, you know, people are going to say what they want on social media. Um, you know, that's just what happens with the free speech platform with certain limitations, but that's just what's, you know, what's going to happen. That's the reality of it. But what people need to understand, and I say this from an objective point of view, is that, yes, there are some therapies that are really bad um, for individuals with developmental disabilities, um, specifically in this case, autistic people. Um, I can't name them at the top of my head, but I would say one, um, one area in the country, one center um, organization called the Judge Rottenberg Center, which you guys may have heard of. They're based, I think, in Massachusetts, and they use shock therapy on autistic people and people with ADHD. And I think that's where um, the people on social media are getting those um, false analogies and misconceptions that therapy, um, especially from Autism Speaks or other um, other organizations like Autism Speaks are being used um, for negative instead of positive. Um, and I'm not saying that because it's true. I'm saying that just because it's in general a false, you know, it's a common misconception. Um, like I said, from a personal point of view, I had a lot of fun in occupational music therapy. It wasn't violent. They never whipped me. They never you know, put me in an electric chair. It was very fun and easygoing. And um, I feel like if we spread those types of messages on social media, spread those types of facts, especially with a personal account like mine on this podcast, then we're able to hopefully get a better point of view on social media about what Autism Speaks does, what a better view about, you know, what ASAN does or the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network does. Awesome. Well, speaking on social of social media, you've grown a pretty big platform on TikTok. You have what, uh, 150k now or something like that? Yeah, just uh, hit 150k about a week ago. Nice. So what was your first viral video? Uh, my first viral video, um, funny that you say, funny that you ask that, um, it actually had nothing to do with autism at all. Um, it was about my three reasons on why I don't drink. Um, and it was very controversial because at the time I was a junior in college going on a senior. And um, a lot of my, some my three reasons were a little bit joking and exaggerated, but they were also true. They were in a sense exaggerated to make a point. Um, but they, it was nevertheless very controversial because drinking, college drinking especially, is very popular. And um, it's been a staple in college for centuries um, or at, le at least for centuries. Um, but what it, were the, that was my uh, first fire. What were the three? Um, first one's irrelevant now. Um, the, my, first, my first reason was I'm underage. I'm still 20. That's irrelevant because now I'm 22. I'm above the legal age um, to drink. Second one was, um, what was it, um, number two, um, um, oh, um, people, people who drink um, in college, you know, they're always, they're always wobbly and um, trying to find their movement. And I say, well, they're the ones that look ridiculous. I'm the one that looks smart and sober. And that kind of became a trend where everyone's like on TikTok, hey, it's a smart and sober guy. And then the third one um, was, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me um the third one was um um the the taste yeah the taste of it um that uh, personally i don't like the taste of beer or alcohol that's why i don't drink um but i know other people you know like the taste of beer or alcohol but that's just the reason why um like i th those are those are my three reasons in general seems pretty reasonable what do you say yeah. andrew <laughs> No, I think it's pretty good. Well, I have a new third for you. I'll, I'll let you um, 
steal one of the ones that I use, and it's um, I don't need alcohol to say stupid shit. I do that just fine on my own. <laughs> I'll go with that one. I like that one. <laughs> and nobody who knows me disagrees with that statement, especially. Right, right Eileen? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't need it. Yes. <laughs> what trends have you noticed on TikTok? And Eileen, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've told you this. You know, I still don't have a TikTok. Oh, my God. I, I I I will get TikTok when you watch Star Wars, okay? Yeah. Okay, good. So what trends have you noticed on TikTok? Um, so many trends. Um, and they're not just in the field of autism, they're just in general. Um, and what I mean what I mean by that are they're just general trends that just casually blow up, um, just as with any social media platform. And the autistic community will take advantage and jump on those trends, and they're really fun to watch. Um there's a third party service for editing videos on TikTok called CapCut Video Editor. And a lot of cat cut video editor videos have gotten very popular on TikTok. Uh, it's one of those things where I can't describe it to you guys in words. Um, you'd have to go on to CapCut Video Editor to see what I'm talking about. But visually speaking, if you were to see them on your screen, they're really fun videos um, as far as um, a meme from a certain movie. Um, like, for example, there's a meme from um, the other guy starring Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg that's getting very popular. Um, the movie came out 13 years ago, but just now a meme is starting to from CapCut video editor is blowing up um, that movie again. And again, it's you'd have to go check it out. It's really funny. And then, of course, there are just the normal trends such as a certain dance or um, a certain movement or even a filter um, that's popular on TikTok, such as a mirror delay where um, you're talking and then there's another clone of you right next to you and they say things that you said that that, that actual you said three seconds later again very hard to explain like by words you have to see it visually mm -hmm. um so those are the kind of trends um and as far as like the specific autism trends um really honestly the same stuff that i've been seeing the past two to three years as far as um um as far as which organization is you know better than the other and i don't really like to get involved in that debate too much um um and then also um, masking in the autism community what's um um what's going on with world autism awareness month world autism acceptance day those kind of trends so all sorts of fun amazing trends both in autism both in the autism community and, you know, in, in general and in, in all communities on TikTok. Speaking of uh, World Autism Month, what do you think about all the controversies like blue uh, versus red and the infinity loop puzzle piece and all of that? Yeah, well, that is a very, I, I love the question and I'm more than happy to get into it. Um, I have just so much to say on that. Um, oh, you know, and it's all, and it's all positive. Um, you know, I try to make it as positive and as objective as possible you see the thing is eileen and andrew is that um i think the autism community um has gotten i'd say a little bit political and um i don't need to bring up the word um okay <laughs> a lot a little. somewhat to a lot there are different opinions on it but for me, it's gotten somewhat political as far as, okay, which which side is better, the Light It Up Blue or the Reddit Stead movement? For me personally, um, I think both sides are amazing. Um, you know, I know I've been involved with Autism Speak somewhat, even though I don't officially work for the company. And I've even talked to some advocates who are self-advocates who are part of the Red Instead movement and who believe slightly in what um, the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network does, or even the Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network do. I believe both sides are very amazing and special. And while I don't agree with everything Autism Speaks does or everything ASAN does, um, in the end, for me, I just look at, I look at it simple. Common sense and objectivity for me comes first. So in the end, with that said, in the end, it's all about um, the, you know, the um, the autistic person and spreading the acceptance and the awareness. That's what I really try to get out of my company, and that's what I really try to get out of posting um, on posting my TikToks as a content creator. You know, it's kind of funny that I go all the way back in time to two years ago when I first got TikTok. 
I initially downloaded it as a joke just to stay connected to all my friends who went to Washington State University with me. So I know that's the school I went to and I graduated from there last year with a bachelor's. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as far as, you know, the content creation field and getting involved, I just downloaded it as a joke. But I started to get more involved in the autistic community on TikTok when I started noticing all these Red Instead advocates um, posting all these new trends in the autism community. They were educating me on so much more than I was educated with from certain org organizations years ago. Before getting TikTok, I thought I knew everything about autism. When I got on TikTok, I'm like, wait, rain check. I didn't know everything about autism and I still don't and I'm growing. Um, to this day, knowing more about autism, either on TikTok or from Autism Speaks. But going back to what I was saying, when I first got onto the platform and started posting my own versions of what I think um, certain followers and leaders of the Red Instead movement and the Light It Up Blue movement are doing, um, I started to uh, take notice to all these great content creators on TikTok that we're starting to notice my videos, um, such as Tim Boykin, he goes by the Black Infinity King on TikTok, or even, I don't know if you guys have heard of her, her name's Paige Lale, she's an autistic and ADHD activist, and she's on TikTok, but she's more popular on YouTube, she has millions of followers, way more popular than I am, but um, she is pretty much the focal point and the, um, the leader, um, the unofficial leader of that new movement of trends and education in the autism community. She posts amazing videos. She's very fun. Um, and, you know, we, we both follow each other on social media. She's just, she's an excellent person. Um, but um, what I started to notice is how deeper and more negative that kind of talk was getting in the autism community to the point where not only were, um, you know, and, and, and especially in the comments where Red Instead advocates would post very hateful messages, um, either by comment or reacting to a certain video on the platform about the Light It Up Blue movement, but they would blow up blow up over small things. For example, um, the Light It Up Blue movement, um, and I don't know if Autism Speaks was a part of this or not, um, last year during I, Halloween. I, I'm pretty sure they created the Light It Up Blue movement or the movement yeah, for them. So I, right. I think it's safe to say that that they were a part of that one. But um, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good point noted. Um, but um, they, um, I'm sure you guys have heard of the Blue Pumpkins where you give um, an autistic yeah. Um, yeah. individual a blue pumpkin. And for some reason, what I wasn't irritated about this, but I was like strongly questioning it. The Red Instead movement was criticizing it saying, um, why are you giving kids a blue pumpkin? Why can't you give them an orange pumpkin just like every other kid? For me, I don't really care about that. I mean, it's it's a blue pumpkin. Like if you don't like a blue pumpkin for your autistic child or oh, individual, yeah. give them a purple pumpkin, a orange pumpkin, a red pumpkin. I don't care. It's just like, it's a pumpkin. And in the end, it's to celebrate Halloween. Um, and it's in the end, it's about trick or treating. Um, and, but that's the, those are just one of many examples of how it's gotten a little bit political in the autism community. Um, and that's why I've, you know, in the past year and a half, I started, um, you know, telling my life story, my personal life story on TikTok more. And I think that's why I've stayed so relevant as an autistic advocate on TikTok um, um, and, you know, consistently getting views and follows. My viewership um, has staggered a little bit. And it's going up and down more like my videos as far as like getting in the hundreds of thousands are getting more inconsistent. Um, but that's just because of the overall TikTok algorithm changing. I've been able to keep my head in the game, stay consistent, stay relevant, post content that's not only funny and laughable, but also educational and entertaining. And to me, in the end, people don't want politics in the autism community. Remember, going back to what I said a few moments ago, in the end, it's about spreading acceptance and spreading that education. That's what I'm trying to spread. But I've also evolved to realize, you know what, I need to post stuff about my family life, other parts of my life story, because in the end, I've realized, and especially talking to recent people um, that I've just gotten to meet and know in my life becomes good friends with, I've learned from them that autism is not the only thing that makes me valuable. 
I would say being a black autistic content creator makes me valuable. Um, you know, just being on this podcast and having all these connections makes me um, valuable. And it also makes you guys valuable as well. Um, you know, being kind to people, spreading love and compassion, that all makes me valuable. Having a bright family makes me valuable. Those are the kind of things I'm spreading on the platform. And that's why I think that I've stayed relevant. On the other hand, and I'm not going to name names just out of respect, and these are all people that I follow. Some of fellow autistic and ADHD content creators who are on TikTok, who I'm friends with, have been posting videos recently of how their views have been declining so much um and the uh, um they're like their autism related videos have been declining so much and pretty much what they post a lot are jokes about autism and all the all the debate about autism i believe that's why they're losing views because people are getting disinterested in that debate about autism and that's why i believe my videos again have been able to stay relevant um and not to crack on my no, not to crack on my fellow content creators' videos. I think they're still posting great videos, um, but I feel like they need to switch things up. That would be my advice to them if I could see them, if I were talking to them on this call today. They need to, you know, switch things up, switch their switch styles. They need to um, maybe post more about their life story, post something else that makes them valuable. In other words, they need to evolve. They need to grow. Um, as a human, you need to evolve. If you don't evolve, you're you're not going to go anywhere um it's just like no different for example if you know you're um you're one years old and you're learning to take your first step and then four years later you're still learning to take your first step at five or six years old that means you're not evolving it's the same thing with your content you have to grow and you have to learn and hey i'm still evolving and i'm still learning about the autism community every day but I'm saying that the autism community needs to, you know, get their head out of the political debate about autism. They need to stop playing the blame game and they need to go go up to people directly, especially young, um, young people who are maybe in grade school who are learning about autism and say, hey, if you're autistic or um, if you have a developmental disability, you can choose which organization um, you're, you know, you're able to um learn from or educate yourself from if you want to learn from autism speaks learn you know get resources from autism speaks here are resources for autism speaks if you're not interested in autism speaks go over to the asa and look at resources there regardless of what side you get your information on in general they all have the same mission whether it's on TikTok or whether it's um on a zoom call like this or whether it's just in person at the actual organization itself whatever side you get your information from in general Everybody, every side wants the same thing is to spread education, to spread acceptance and to spread awareness. That's what I'm trying to get back to. And that's what I'm really or that's what I have been really um, with that said, showing in the past year and a half, you know, posting content on TikTok. So I will say that that's not what every organization does, but I do think that's every organization worth following. Right. You know, if you're only following and this is any organization at all, that's that's only saying, like you said, like it, it's good. The views are going down. Like, you know, if there's no value add, if you're just talking about, you know, I mean, why someone else sucks. Right. Not like right. not like, you know, why to support your organization. You should have a reason on how to do that without putting the, you know the other side down i always think that's a good way to go and i'm always kind of like you know talking about what trends are out there i'm always thinking man i'm so glad the autism community has solved every single issue and the only thing that we should be fighting about is whether a few organizations suck or which ones to like um support i mean so like there's a lot more good we can do right to help so like in connecticut last week there was testimony on a bill that would have provided support to tens or hundred thousands of people with autism in the state of connecticut who don't get support and services because their iq is high wait where, where, where were we about that right who who is advocating about that like that's an important thing there's so much more i agree with you we should focus on trying to make you know lives better and that doesn't mean that i mean some things like shock, you know, electric shock, I think 
autism speaks is against that too eileen everyone is pretty much right, right? i actually don't know anyone who's for it but i'm yeah. sure someone might exist um but you know sure there's some things like that but for the most part if this therapy worked for you and that therapy worked for someone else that's okay right um right so it's yeah no thank you for having a, a good perspective how do we yeah, get or, others to see your perspective or to see other perspectives? Because um, that's one thing I think we really notice is, especially with autism, it's, you know, my way or the highway, right? How do we right. bridge the gap? <laughs> how do we bridge the gap? Keep things simple. You know, I'm sure you guys have heard of the KISS method. My dad taught me it. Keep it simple, stupid, or stupid, simple, however you want to put it. And how does that apply to, um, you know, bridging the gap? Well, um, like I said, focus on the acceptance. Just focus on um, helping autistic lives. Um, and that may be a tough question because everybody has a different opinion on how to help lives, um, help um, autistic individuals' lives specifically. Um, but I would say in order to do that, you know, um, attend speaking engagements, get involved with your community, speak up about issues revolving around the autism community, um, and, um, you know, talk to both sides, um, you know, get and, um, you know, review all your research sources, do all your research, and come to your own conclusions. And, um, and you know, most of all, work, work together, um, you know, and this and this is a perfect example of that, this podcast. Um, I'm technically kind of objective around both sides. Um, I, I'd say I support Autism Speaks um, in a lot of ways, and I support ASAN and Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network in a lot of ways. Um, and, you know, you both work for and are heavily involved with Autism Speaks, bridging the gap, I'm talking, potentially talking about our differences right now. Um, but regardless, um, working with Autism Speaks or not, um, you know, Eileen, Andrew, you know, just me, all, all, of, all three of us on this podcast, for example, that's bridging the gap, potentially sharing our differences, agreeing, respectfully agreeing or disagreeing. Um, we're, we're bridging the gap right now. So if other people were to do that in the autism community with the same type of passionate agreement or disagreement and that positive energy that I've talked about so much so far, just imagine how much more we could um, uh, you know, create that bridge and bring those communities together. Oh, yeah. And I love that you're here because, I mean, you know, we might not agree on everything, but I know one thing is that if we don't agree, we're always going to be respectful with each other. And I think that's another big issue uh, on social media is that when people disagree with each other, they attack and they can be very, very nasty, you know, and uh you know, there's a way to disagree with people without putting them down and making threats and insults and like reporting their pages. I mean, it gets ugly very quickly. And mm -hmm. uh, I think, I, I mean, I would love to work more with you on finding ways to like bridge that gap since you have kind of a, a foot uh, on the other side of whatever the expression is, but you know what I mean? Uh, right. I feel like, you know, you could maybe maybe help be that uh, bridge uh, we need. Um, but I wanted to ask you about something. Uh, on TikTok, you see a lot of videos about people um, sharing videos like, okay, if you do these three things, then you have autism. Okay, if you do this one thing, then you have ADHD and all of that. Uh, what are your thoughts on this trend of like, you know, just kind of like TikTok diagnosis, I want to say? Yeah, so I've vaguely seen those videos, if at all. Um, I believe those, from the way you're describing them, it sounds like you're self, those are self-diagnosis videos. Um, and my opinion on those videos specifically are, you know, you, you, I feel like you have to get tested for autism. You have to have a professional autism clinical researcher or somebody who professionally diagnoses, diagno, diagno, diagnoses people with um, developmental disabilities. Um, you've got to find those people. Um, I mean, if you want to self-diagnose yourself, that's fine. But the only problem with that is that you can't, you don't have official records 
of yourself being diagnosed with autism, therefore you can't get the necessary accommodations needed um, for people with autism or people with developmental disabilities. Um, for example, um, there's a lady who I follow, um, her name's Kara Sinclair, and she's an autistic um, LGBTQ plus activist. Um, who was the, the person platform. again? Kara Sinclair. Kara okay. Sinclair. Well, Br Bridget goes by Bridget Sinclair. That's why I, th I thought I missed oh. the name too. So, okay. Uh -oh. Eddie, who's also LGBTQ. A anyway, moving on. Yeah. But um, Kara Sinclair, um, she's an advocate and activist for autism and ADHD. She has both those um, disabilities. And um, she, um, she self-diagnosed herself years prior to getting diagnosed with autism officially. She was late diagnosed with autism at the age of 19. Um, officially, she got tested, but beforehand, she diagnosed herself way before when she was little and with ADHD as well. The only problem with that is when she was in junior high and high school, she never was able to receive the necessary accommodations because she wasn't officially diagnosed. So to answer your question, Eileen, with, with all that said, um, you have to get tested um, officially um, by an, a professional autism clinical researcher, um, or else you're not ever going to receive the necessary accommodations. If we could live in a world where you could self-diagnose yourself and get those accommodations, I'd be all for it. But unfortunately, that's not the reality we live in. So again, you got to get tested by a professional clinical researcher. Yeah. Well, there's that in there's a lot to so with the adulting on the spectrum facebook group that we have uh that we run where the name comes from we have you know are you you know autistic and we say you know officially diagnosed or self-diagnosed or suspecting being diagnosed i really always like the suspecting being diagnosed because um you know it's still validating it's it's a nice way you know i i mean to because I think there is a lot of people who see traits in their kids or see traits in themselves, but it's important to get an accurate diagnosis. I know somebody who thought she had autism because she wasn't like her two boys or her son, so she went to get tested. Well, it turned out the three of them had autism and she didn't. That's why she felt different than them. <laughs> right. So, but... One thing you said earlier in the podcast, I, I just want to circle back to it, is you said that you learned a lot about autism from a lot of these TikTok, you know, creators. And but at the same time, you said that you really didn't watch a lot of the diagnosis videos. And I think there's really a thin line. You know, somebody's saying, Eileen, you look confused as shit. I think I'm gonna get to a point, I promise. Yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> Okay, basically, when somebody describes something about autism about themselves, and you're saying, you know, but that could just be something about themselves, it doesn't have to be autism. How do you navigate who is a good autism content creator, and the person who says, you know, I have autism, and I like to fidget, okay, but that doesn't mean you have autism, right? Do you follow me? How do you follow? How do you know the good TikTok people from the bad? Um, if I could... I mean, if I could like um, uh, comprehend the question as best as I can. If, um, if I, I could, could comprehend the question the best as I then that would be a positive as well. So uh -huh. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, you know, to me, there's no such thing as a bad content, autistic content creator. Every autistic content creator, self-diagnosed or not, um, has their own positive message or potentially positive message to share. Um, I don't really decipher. I just view um, certain autistic content creators that I think are posting the the necessary um, sensitive and positive um, kind of content that we should be seeing on the TikTok community. Um, so I don't decipher. Um, I just I just know which ones I'm following that are posting the um, positive and necessary videos on the platform. But there are people who any, I'm going to challenge you a little bit. Anyone can take a video, can think they have, you know, autism, can say, and this is my autism, 
make a video about it, you know, and post it. And I think that could lead other people thinking, oh, well, I have autism too, right? So, but how do people, you know, stay away from maybe the people who, not everyone, you said everyone either has or has the possibility to have good intentions or something like that, or a positive message. But, but there are people who don't, who aren't currently sharing positive messages or, you know, there is misinformation out there. It is the internet after all. Is there any way to be on the lookout for misinformation? Is it the people who are talking, you know, not from a place of kindness and what you should be against, not what should you be for? Are those the people you should stay away from or? Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, I totally agree with you. There are, there have been, quite a bit of people um, and organizations who I, um, you know, came across uh, from um, who um, I would say are trying to not move autism forward and move the spectrum backward and take us back to a time when, um, you know, being, being a person with autism was a lot harder, not only um, in your household, but just in public in general. Um, for example, there's this um, organization, they ended up leaving TikTok because they got a lot of criticism. Um, they were called the Be Hair Foundation. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but um, they um, posted a video that um, we need to find a cure for autism. And they gave these very crazy and outlandish, misleading ideas of why we need to find a cure for autism. And um, first of all, for starters, I totally disagreed with the video. There's no cure for autism. There will never be a cure for autism. Um, autism is not supposed to be cured. It's a part of us. It's a part of who we are. Um, it's what makes us our personality. It's what shapes us. Um, so there's no cure for autism. Um, and he did give a couple good, I guess he did objectively, when I say this objectively speak, and he gave one good reason, maybe two. One of the reasons that stood out for me is that um, in the life expectancy of kids with autism is half of that or nearly half of that as somebody who's not autistic. The reason why that is the case, though, is because of the stress that autistic individuals sometimes go through by not receiving enough accommodations or resources to help them with their autism. And um, life expectancy always falls in general, not just with people with autism, but in general, when you're not receiving enough help and resources, such as um, um, any resources for um, medicine or um, uh, uh, seeing a psychologist or things like that in general. So that's the reason why. But this makes such an outlandish claim that there's a cure. Um, which there well, isn't. And, and, and a lot of the other reasons why is a lot on the uh, severe and to use Eileen's words, right? Have a lot <laughs> of coexisting physical uh, medical issues as well. So there, there are a lot of problems with that statistic because, you know, someone like yourself or you know, me or Eileen, you know, in theory, our life expectancy should be, you know, um, average, right? But it's a lot of the autism, it's not, and there's probably some relation to what you said as well, but a lot of it is a lot of people with autism have other physical health concerns as well. Um, I was going to say, I don't have the stat, but I know that a lot of people with uh autism also have uh, comorbid conditions like seizures that's like, what i just said i know I, oh okay i'm not, I'm not but you're saying it better andrew yeah exactly <laughs> with the french accent it is better with the french accent much better but much better. but really the, the other thing is the intellectual disability and that a lot of uh, autistic people don't have a sense of danger that's why the number one cause of uh, death in autistic people is uh Death by uh, accident, and a lot of time it's uh, draw, uh, drowning, because you know you often see these stories in the news about how like another you know a little child uh, can be f is missing, and then sadly a few days later uh, he's like found uh, dead after drowning. I mean we see this so many times a year, and it always breaks my heart because you know my son is the same way. 
he doesn't know, you know, that running in front of cars is dangerous, that, you know, jumping in a lake uh, is going to get him himself drowned. So I think, uh, you know, that's why I wish there was a different term for people who have like uh, profound autism, which is now recognized. Um, and uh, people like, you know, the three of us, um, because the intellectual disability makes a big difference, I think. And it's hard sometimes to, uh, you know, separate the autism from the intellectual disability. And uh, yeah. Why were, were we talking about this? I lost my train of thought. Hey, oh, yeah. The, the, pure, the club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's been, it's been one of those episodes but yeah no but it's interesting you know i i like that we can talk about uh the different perspectives and all of that with uh, gw because uh it's uh it's important you know right right and i wasn't trying to um kind of come down um on you guys or anybody out there um who may not be um um you know who may um be intellectually disabled people. like eileen <laughs> not something like that <laughs> overall you know some other examples and these are just simpler examples not a big one like the be here foundation for example if somebody you know posts you know i try to shy away from the creators who maybe post um a video that um you know calls another autistic person an idiot or a fool and i have seen videos like that where um there's something on tiktok called duets or stitches, um, kind of like retweets or reposts where um, you um, uh, play the first five to 10 seconds of a video and you react to it um, by on your own. Um, and that's what a, some autistic content creators would do. They would react to other autistic individuals' videos and disagree with them harshly, sometimes even flipping the middle finger, um, which, you know, obviously is not very acceptable and uh, not very cool. I mean, you obviously can't control them from doing that, but it's not something that's okay and acceptable. You know, if uh, it's like if I were, and I'm not going to do this, I'm talking theoretics, like if I were to say stuff like that or do that to you guys right now, um, obviously you can't control that behavior, but that doesn't make that behavior okay. It's disrespectful and insensitive and callous. Um, so I try to shy away from those creators like that. And don't get me wrong, that's one video they post, and they've posted other videos where they truly talk about autism and their beliefs in it from the heart, which I respect. But that for me, that one video that they do, even if it's one mistake they make, that's still a turn off for me. And I try to, again, shy away from that and try to focus on the creators that only want to post positive videos and videos that aren't going to mislead people and judge others or even ourselves the wrong way. Yeah, I just to challenge you just a little bit because I do agree with what you're saying and you know I I don't like when people are only posting just to tear each other down but about the like posting about negative things I think that we can't just post about the positive side of autism you know because autism comes with challenges as as much as I want you know people to like see the the good part I also want to be uh, objective in what I'm sharing about autism and you know like we were just talking about for some people autism as you know you can find a lot of strengths but from for other people it's uh you know living maybe in an institution because they can't care for themselves at all and all of that so I mean I think it was more not that I think he was referring to not necessarily the negatives of autism but the negativity of autism so you can talk about like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, GW, talk about like your weaknesses, how autism affects you, but what Eileen would say with, you know, hate, that's a different story, right? Like acknowledging, you know, some of the deficits, that's especially yours, that's that's not the negativity you're referring about. That's I is very helpful, like Eileen said. Is that right? You're close. Um, just to clarify to the both of you guys, um, what I mean by when I say negativity, I'm talking about videos that directly attack um, other people. And those are the videos that I was talking about a few moments ago. Um, with certain negative videos, I will admit are fine, um, just like the ones Eileen was talking about, um, such as um, the struggles and issues people go through 
um, with their autism or their ADHD, or if they have any other type of developmental or physical disability. In a way, those videos can be positive because in the end, you watch those videos and you sympathize with that person and they want to be, and they're sometimes intended inadvertently to be uplifting and motivating, but they are nevertheless negative in their own tone, in their own concept. And um, that's, and again, I will, um, Eileen has a right to challenge me there because I do admit that right there, that there are some negative videos, especially those ones she's talking about that are fine, that are acceptable. Um, there's a content creator, um, her name's Rebecca Faith Quinn. Rebecca Faith Quinn, that's her real name. And she goes by on TikTok and Instagram, Ribera Bonbon. And she has way more followers than I do, both on TikTok and IG. I think she has about close to 300,000 followers on TikTok, about maybe... 50,000 followers on Instagram. So she's a big influencer. Um, and she's a comedian as well. She does a lot of comedy shows, um, either in LA or somewhere in South, um, the Southern California area. Um, Cause that's, I think that's where she's from. But basically she posts a lot of autism comedy videos that are not only funny, but sometimes she posts videos that are, um, that have those kind of negative connotations that I think Eileen was referring to. Um, the challenges of growing up having autism, the negatives about it. I posted a couple of those videos, although my style on posting uh, posting as a content creator is much different. But as far as what she does, she posts those kind of videos as well as a lot of other autistic content creators. Yeah, thanks for, for clarifying. I, we're on the same page. Uh, Andrew's going to ask you some quick fire question and, and that will be it. Yeah. Okay. So just say the uh the first thing that comes to uh comes to your mind. Do you have a favorite quote? If so, what is it? If you think you can, and if you think you can, then you're right on both occasions. Henry Ford. Favorite autism representation in a movie or TV show? Um, gonna have to go with Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks. You know, he takes home the gold. De developmental disability? Did did he have autism? He did, yes. Okay, I didn't know. Um next question. What is your favorite animal? Um, lion. What is your favorite movie? Avatar. First or second? It's so tough. I thought they were both really good. Uh, both is, I both very is acceptable. Nitpicky. Very nitpicky. I'd have to go the first one, but that is very tough. They're both really good. And is glow in the dark a color? Like the, I don't, we usually show uh, what it looks like. Don't have that with me here today, but the glow in the dark with the lights on, like that greenish yellow. Is that a color? or a property um i mean from a common sense standpoint i think it's a color to me so okay thank you wow <laughs> you found your person andrew there thank we you. go Someone See, agrees with common you. sense prevails <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us today can you tell people where to find you on social media gw yes um you guys can find me on tiktok and instagram um, on all platforms at autism chose me and that's all one word autism chose me and um, you can also go to my website at autism chose me .com. Um, I have a lot of um, big tabling events and speaking engagements coming up especially next month for world autism acceptance month so definitely follow all my platforms to stay up to date and alert for those awesome thank you so much I mean one of my favorite episodes that was uh, awesome so thank you of course thank you